Dr. Nick Delgado here with Dr. Kathleen Garinger. We're talking about what we call immortal peptides. The pursuit of immortality has been something that all generations have been interested in. And what do peptides do? How do they stimulate the body? How do they help the body to recover, recuperate, and strengthen, and stay younger over the years? This is really a novel area because keep in mind that peptides themselves uh, can and may extend not just lifespan, but we think health span. Of course, what do we mean? Healthy quality of life, right? Yes. And there are 60 FDA approved peptides at this point, yet there's over 7,000 known peptides. So science continues to pursue. Uh, I myself have been actively looking at these peptides since the very early years, uh, probably as far back as uh, the 1978, 80, 90. Uh, I've been looking at these things because the whole idea of human growth hormone and various other peptides to rejuvenate and make a difference in living a better quality life. You know, I think back uh, through my family history and you think about genetics and you think about your own parents and how they aged and you think, gosh, you know, aging's tough. You've got to do something about it. You can't just give up. You've got to push forward. And so looking through the generations and through my own family history and looking at my friends and other doctors and relatives, you know, it really motivates me to realize this is where it's at. What is your biological age? So I often ask, how young are you, Dr. Kathleen? How young are you? Because you're really only as old as your cellular tissue, your membranes, your biological age. And what does that mean? That, that means you could be 60, 70, 80, 90, and yet be 10, 20, maybe even 30 years younger. And if so, what will you look like? How will you feel? And how quickly will you respond? What's astonishing to me, Dr. Geringer, is how quickly people respond over the decades. And one of my favorite good friends, and uh, of course, Bob Del Delmantique, uh, he passed on a few years back. But uh, being one of our active uh, clients and uh, a very well-educated scientific uh, pursuit of fitness gentleman, and he really uh, also embodied kind of that spirit of passion and love and sexuality that he taught and wrote articles about senior health and, and sexuality. And one of the things he was known for was looking literally spectacular uh, in front of the camera, in the gym, uh, out on photo shoots. And look at this picture in the middle, age 17, age 60, and age 80, actually looking more muscular, more ripped, and better shape. And I know because I spoke with him literally almost on a weekly basis, and I would get the insights of what he did to perfect his body and his mind. He was a big believer in the power of the mind, and I really respect him for that because he knew you are what you project and what you focus on, right? And the yes. power of the mind is really the beginning core of our four critical steps, right? Of course, of course. First, we want to detoxify, we want to neutrify, we want to fortify, and the power of the mind, that's huge. And I think the power of the mind, even though it's listed number four, it doesn't minimize its importance because I think that having that will to live, striving to be the very best in your own health profile, not necessarily competing with other people per se. I mean, if you're a competitive athlete, that makes it fun and more um, kind of engaging, you know, to, to take yourself to a higher level. But I, I look at Kelly Nelson uh, right next to Bob Delmantique. Uh, and uh, her bathing suits, uh, what is it, the silver and colorish? Yes, would you silver say? color. <laughs> uh, here's a picture of her age 74. Wow. Now, at age 65, she mm -hmm. entered into this whole realm of changing her diet, going plant based, vegan, mm -hmm. uh, exercising, working out with weights, which is kind of ahead of its time for a lady, you know, in her yes. essentially senior mm -hmm. years. Uh, to uh, age 65 and all the way up to 74 to be competing in strength and endurance and bodybuilding competitions. Colleen, the daughter there uh, with the, the blue bathing suit, really an amazing uh, physique and living to this day, she's written a, a book and acknowledged you know, some of these whole areas. And I, I think the other thing that kept uh, Bob so alive and vital was you know, early on he was in the fitness industry, of course, but he also had a real passion about love and intimacy and sexuality. So he and I did some talks back in 2005 uh, at the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. The room was packed. We had doctors wanting to hear the latest in information and incredible talks. But a lot of it really gets back to what do we need to do as we age and as there are 
very specific ways. And of course, we've all heard of human growth hormone and growth factors, right? Oh, of course. <laughs> and this is an important area because the cells need that kind of nurturing, that stimulation, that acknowledgement that we're uh, going through the phases of life and preserving the health, the quality of our skin, our muscle density, and yet aging doesn't look very nice. I mean, it's a real problem. Mm. I mean, we look at frailty, human frailty. We look at the change in the skin, the thinning of the skin, the wrinkling of the skin, the sagging muscles, the loss of muscle density. And I think that this is one of the areas that uh, we all have to pay attention to, whether it be multiple hormone deficiencies, because mm -hmm. that is the site of, of aging as we know it, and also learning how to use elegant methods to stimulate the body to recover, repair, and to become stronger and more youthful. Can it be done? Well, we have examples, of course, of this as well. What about human growth hormone? What is this molecule? Why is it so important? Well, growth hormone, it's a hormone that stimulates growth and reproduction. And it's like this 191 amino acid single chain protein hormone that back in 1971, Dr. Lee determined the structure of the human growth hormone. Now it's interesting that many athletes found out the wonderment of human growth hormone. By itself, I don't think it was a wonder uh, hormone intervention because most athletes knew to use testosterone, maybe balance or deal with their estrogen levels. But one of the things that the sports community did and the scientific medical community was they went ahead and made a 192 amino acid uh, growth hormone. So it made it easy to detect when they were doing drug testing. Oh. So it's interesting mm -hmm. that the athletes who understood that the original 191 amino acid complex was used for dwarfism. So if they could get their hands on that particular form of human growth mm -hmm. hormone, it wouldn't be detected uh, for whatever reason. Maybe they wanted to kind of go beyond in their sport, but they didn't want to be ostracized or you know left by the wayside because of you know so-called enhancement performance issues. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not making judgment here. I'm just simply saying that there's been a lot of pursuit and I think the problem is that some of the other hormones have been so overly abused that growth hormone got classified as a scheduled drug uh, and then it required a doctor's prescription. It required certain tests to prove you have low human growth hormone levels. But human growth hormone has been around for quite a while and athletes of course like Arnold Schwarzenegger himself, uh, certainly knowing the benefit and the use. And uh, now that I believe he's uh, uh, age um, 73, uh, yes, like 73. I think one year older than uh, Sylvester Stallone, yes. they're both born mm -hmm. in July. Uh, it's interesting because they both have that real competitive spirit. They're in the movies, of course, Governor Schwarzenegger. I mean, who could have imagined a person could have such a career? And I really think his career would have been quite different had he not been into enhancing his body and his physicality. But he really has a very powerful uh, secure understanding of the power of the mind. He practices oh, on I a bet. daily basis. Every year I get to mm -hmm. go backstage with Arnold at the Arnold Classic and interview the celebrities in the uh, award ceremonies. And you know, you think about it, what is human growth hormone? Why does it work so beneficially? And what are some of the other secretagogues? Because human growth hormone is not the only way to stimulate the release of your own body's human growth hormone and what we call IGF-1, which comes from the liver. Here's some of the other secretagogues, right? Epimorelin, CJC-1295, semorelin, tesmorelin, and all of these encourage the pituitary gland to increase human growth hormone, HGH. Uh, again, we're not shooting for excessive levels. Uh, we recognize that certainly there are examples of acromegalia and giantism where they have really excessive levels. So we studied some of those cases to make sure what is the upper limit that can cause some side effects and by itself. So we realized that we really have kind of that physiologic range, again, shooting towards that youthful level. And I know that you and I are always looking at do no harm first, but really stimulate the body in an appropriate uh, manner mm -hmm. because there's some uh, question about, well, how would it be if you increase IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor, or human growth hormone? Are we shortening one's actual lifespan? And you look at the pituitary gland, we look at the hypothalamus, we look at the different organs, the anterior lobe of the pituitary, the capillary beds, and all these very important, very small organs, really, yes. considering how powerful and important they are. So when we look at what's called growth hormone, GHRH, GHRP, uh, they're produced every day, 
and released by the hypothalamus pituitary axis. What, again, is its importance? Why are these growth factors, Dr. Kathleen Gerringer, so important, and what do they do with the body? Well, growth factors, especially over the age of 40, um, we have these small proteins and they communicate from cell to cell. So they actually coordinate these activities and they regulate your cell growth division and they specialize in a really awesome way that it helps to coordinate your immune system, your nervous system, your hormonal system. It prevents like viruses from expression at a gene site. You know, it also enhances your cellular communication revitalizes cells, and of course, when we talk about HGH, human growth hormones, the half-life is what, 20 minutes? Very short. Mm -hmm. Yes. But it, it exerts a stimulation sufficient that its peak is after bedtime in deep REM sleep. Uh, that's the biggest release of, of HGH, human growth hormone, by the body naturally. So you really want to make sure you get that quality sleep. Again, that's why we're such big advocates about the factors of lifestyle medicine and how important sleep is and minimizing the use of stimulants and really kind of detoxifying the body and, and letting the body rejuvenate. Uh, but even though it only releases uh, late at night, you know, in the middle of the night, and again, first thing in the morning, again in the afternoon, it looks like probably for those who people are wanting to augment or utilize human growth hormone or growth factor peptides, because you have such a good natural release in, in the evening, there's no reason to compete with that release. It's probably the best to take, if you are, some type of intervention with subcutaneous injections, if you will, uh, under the care of, of a doctor, making sure your levels uh, start out sufficiently, if you will, low, because aging is associated with low human growth hormone mm -hmm. and growth factors and peptides, but taking that injection first thing in the morning pretty much and letting the body kind of get that next big peak and ride, even though it stimulates 20 minutes, it stimulates what's called IGF, insulin mm -hmm. growth factor one from the liver for over 20 hours. So for the rest of the day into mm -hmm. the night, you've got this kind of a wave to ride and stimulating and encouraging uh, all of these factors and more. And I have to say, I mean, aging cells, you know, arresting this phase of active uh, activity through growth factors, I think is one of the core treatments. I think the problem is that we often look at athletes who kind of get that front stage, the celebrities, and they are using these particular, if you will, very potent peptides. Mm -hmm. But the problem is they don't always live a healthy lifestyle. Some of them are if you will, drugs, some are addicted, some uh, are eating an animal-based diet that I don't believe is supportive of good health. So they confuse the data and make people think, oh, this kind of therapy or intervention might increase the risk of cancer. Now, the very word growth makes people think that mm -hmm. that's the case, and that's far from the truth. In fact, I, I did do some further research, and again, pulling up more uh, current journals and references in, in my pursuit of, you know, again, identifying what are these little what's called peptide growth factors. What are they doing to help to actually release more GH or human growth hormone in individuals, even in obese individuals? So again, the combination of some of these factors, some of them might actually stimulate um, increased appetite. So something like GHRP might be, in the case of a person wanting to lose weight, may not be the best choice. However, others who are maybe a little bit underweight mm -hmm. want to stimulate that appetite or they're gonna use that kind of package because I tend to find it's good to mix peptides. You don't have to have them all separate. They won't kind of counterbalance each other if they're mixed together and mm -hmm. recombine into some other molecule. They really have a, a beneficial effect. So I'm a big believer in what I call peptide cocktails. And I'm gonna share with you some near the end, some ideas and concepts if that makes sense. But uh, take a look at what GH secretion is also uh, considerably reduced in the condition of... Yes, Cushing syndrome, that's huge. And this suggests that the main Im impairment for Cushing syndrome is the GH secretion in the pathological state that resides at the pituitary level. So it starts out in the brain. Yeah, so in people who overproduce, say for example, cortisol, and they're struggling with their body weight, it, it's kind of... Uh, having a problem of interaction with the, the actual GH secretion. And so uh, we see that in uh, less human growth hormone in those with Cushing syndrome. So they're going to have or, or, or tend to suffer the side effects of having a, a greater tendency towards obesity. Because those people who do produce enough of these growth factors are often 
uh, more fit, more lean, and looking better, and certainly over, over a, a period of time, uh, accomplishing those uh, short and long-term results better. So again, you could say a single nightly dose of these mixed peptides, but you know, I, I've come to the conclusion, I've tried both at night, I've tried in the morning, even in the afternoon release. Afternoon mm -hmm. sometimes inconvenient, you're out and about, you're doing things, mm -hmm. but that morning one is fairly easy to target. And if you miss an injection here or there, no big deal, it's okay. Because the body kind of wants to have a few relief days where you know there's no stimulation, if you will, so the body doesn't kind of like uh, get too used to uh, a type of peptide therapy. And that's also a good reason why at times we want to kind of mix up the type of peptides that are in this cocktail. So if we're wanting to increase muscle strength and we want to increase anaerobic metabolism during exercise, uh, so we can hit uh, higher intensity levels, we're mm -hmm. going to see a better outcome. And I know you know about intensity when you're working out with me, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Short little workout, but huge, huge um, results, I yep. want to say. So consider then uh, six week type programs and looking at one study with elderly patients age 64 to 76, uh, there was no significant adverse effects uh, observed uh, and yet a reversal or a slowing of skeletal muscle function that tends to accelerate in aging in those age categories, we're seeing healthy elderly people improvement from early studies on up to more current. Now here's kind of a, a nice pathway as you can see how they're all interrelated a little bit. Take a look. Yes, exactly. So you have this stimulatory and then you have the inhibitory of these growth hormones. And of course, you know, what it does is that it helps to increase your gremlin hormone, which is huge. And then it's um, amino acids, increase your amino acids, mm -hmm. decreases your blood sugar level and decreases the fatty acid. We like to mix in certain supplemental regimes that help to assist the amino acids. We mm -hmm. like to get certain herbs that stabilize blood sugar levels. We, we like to look at, you know, how do we manage appetite, appetite in a manner that helps to regulate the hormonal balance and tie in exercise to make it all work more effectively and get that blood sugar absorption, mm -hmm. that uh, free fatty acid for the omegas and the anti-inflammatory benefits and really kind of calm down that, uh, that appetite. We found certain herbs that tend to calm down the, the ghrelin uh, appetite and also we, we want to make sure we select the right peptides so that your outcome is, is well deserved. So GLP-1, uh, semetagliladin for diabetes treatment. Uh, this is important. There's some good research in this whole area of benefit. Uh, of course, I always encourage that healthy, whole food, uh, oil-free type lifestyle approach to get the best overall safe results. And melanotannin too stimulates melanocytes, produce mel melanin, causing a tanning appearance. Uh, but then there was a, a, a kind of a surprising discovery uh, that PT-141, which is a extract from melatonin 2, uh, was shown to uh, exert rather strong, uh, nice erections for men uh, to improve their sexual uh, pleasure and outcome. So uh, I do again say that some of these peptides have been known to increase blood pressure levels and hypertension. And here's why I'm such a big believer that in, uh, in the cases that I've looked at for over 40 mm -hmm. years, when you put people on a baseline of this four-step process, but the oil-free plant-based diet with exercise and detoxification, nutrification, fortification, uh, that blood pressure comes right down. And when you do intervene with these potent peptides, I don't see an elevated uh, elevation in blood pressure, certainly not to the level that would be of any concern. The levels, in fact, we find uh, about 110 over 60, 110 over 70, which is half the risk of stroke and a much lower risk of, of cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. uh, where I see a problem is some of these performance athletes, they're taking everything under the sun, they're taking way too high of a dosages of diff different peptides, yes. and more than that, they're not really on a supportive whole foods natural diet, which I think you gotta have those basics covered. Don't you think, Dr. Kathleen Oh Garantry? Yes, yes, absolutely, because animal protein can put a lot of pressure on your kidneys as well. Like, uh, let's talk a little bit about that ketogenic diet that we always talk about. Wow. And it's sad because sometimes patients come in and I run the labs on them and when they're on a long-term ketogenic diet, I'm talking about three months, I see that the liver enzymes are totally off. And I was like, well, is that really healthy? Yes, they might look healthy on the outside, but what about your labs? Right, you so we, we really wanna make sure that uh, you recognize that there are some, um, I think, important interventions in this whole field of rejuvenation 
anti-aging and lifestyle medicine, but I think you have to combine them, the best of both oh, worlds. Oh, absolutely. Yes, if you don't, I agree. you're really going to fall short of and mm -hmm. then blame something else that may yes. have not be the causative mm -hmm. agent. And so this is, uh, for example, epithalon, which resets the HPA hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. We know how important that is, right? Oh, of course. <laughs> that helps to control our cortisol level, our ability to manage stress, controls our hormones and everything else involved. So we, we look at also the probability that this may actually lengthen or preserve the length of the telomeres, which is kind of that site of aging of the, the, the end of the chromosomes. If it kind of unwinds and it's kind of frayed, like the ends of uh, a shoestring, shoestring yes, right? Yes, that little uh, plastic part in your shoestring. <sighs> when it starts to fray, that's when your shoestring gets old. That's the same um, analogy as our body. Right. So we do know now that peptides, one of the potent reasons they are so effective in kind of reshaping the body uh, is uh, it has an exert a beneficial effect on the telomeres, which when they shorten, increase risk of cancer, increase a pre, uh, increased rate of premature aging. But as we use these proper peptides, it's been also known to increase melatonin for better sleep. So we know sleep, again, is very important mm -hmm. for this whole um, anti-aging approach and uh, rejuvenative medicine. So uh, there has been a lot of debate, and early on I was looking at, is there methods to orally introduce through you know, either capsules or liquids with the right delivery systems and uh, kind of combing through the science and the research mm -hmm. from, gosh, I, I go back in the early 2002 and three and so forth, working uh, with Eric Dates or seeing his team and investigating what they were doing and what kind of delivery systems. So we're now of the belief that uh, certain peptides do absorb orally, they mm -hmm. are bioavailable, they do exert a beneficial effect. And one of the earlier, uh, newer ones that I'm working with now with some of my clients and, and uh, participants and the doctors I work with is what's called BPC-157. It's orally bioavailable. It helps to essentially uh, the neural inflammation, it helps other areas too as well. What would that include? Especially like muscle improvement, mm -hmm. improve immunity, also improve collagen synthesis, makes us look younger, increase your bone density, accelerates recovery and healing. For my professional athletes out there, recovery is really, really important. It's not just your competition, it's your body's recovery time is when your body and your cells are able to regenerate new healthy stem cells. We just had a talk about that. And also, it's used for tendon and ligament repair, most often used to treat what I call gut and bowel issues. Yeah, I, I've met uh, some clients that have issues with Crohn's disease, mm -hmm. autoimmune uh, issues, IBS, and so forth. And so it could very well play a good role in restoration for these individuals. Now, here's a good one. Thymosin beta-4, the benefits with rheumatoid arthritis. There's evidence going on dealing with autoimmune conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, and more importantly, uh, this thymosin beta-4 is beneficial for soft tissue injury, increased blood flow to injured areas, aids in healing and recovery. I started taking this peptide essentially this week. I don't want to like add too many things all at once. Mm -hmm. I like to find out what each peptide actually does after reviewing the literature, making say, uh, sure there's a safety record and so forth. But I think it's important when, when you're a, say a senior athlete, mm -hmm. and not that I compete against only seniors, you know, I still compete against guys <laughs> much younger than me and I'm out there putting it out all out effort. So it's inevitable. There's gonna be some possible injuries, muscle tears and tissues and so forth, or certainly a lot of muscle soreness after some of the yes. workouts that, that I like to put us through. But uh, it's interesting how, how these things kind of have a kind of a combined benefit. Thymosin Alpha-1, FDA approved. Uh, there's some commercially available uh, versions of it with uh, helping to treat viral hepatitis, but it's been known to increase the immune response in some cancers. Uh, it's been apparently helpful in Lyme's disease and also used to treat sexually transmitted diseases. So there's some really uh, interesting breakthroughs. Speaking of uh, sexuality, mm -hmm. uh, again, PT-141, uh, here is the intervention with Cactus Pete being the, the show model here, talking about the ben <laughs> benefits of male uh, or trying to overcome or treat erectile dysfunction. 
I, I think for years, you know, men didn't really talk about it, and then it came out on television. People were talking about with the discovery of nitric oxide and that whole cascade. Um, when I was in 1998 with Lou Ignario, heard him speak in Singapore about his Nobel Prize discovery about mm -hmm. how nitric oxide is so important in improving circulation. It really gets back to circulation. It gets back to the integrity of the body. And now we know that this PT-141 has a rather elaborate improvement in uh, sexual performance and function. Uh, females uh, is now uh, available, I believe, mm -hmm. for uh, sexual dysfunction. You can inject a very small amount uh, and uh, it, it varies. You just want to kind of stay below that level of feeling a little bit nausea. If you take in too much, that's the only side effect. You feel some nausea. But mm -hmm. uh, many have reported, I've used this as well, uh, fantasy, erotic lib libido, intense orgasm, experience stronger, firmer erections sometimes um, if you want to engage, I mean, as long as the stimulation is still present, uh, men will last 30 minutes, an hour, hour and a half or two. It may not be that that's your goal. It's just, you know, um, he, when you're having a good time and pleasure, so long as you know how to please your mate. In other words, the erection stays around long enough so that after you please your mate, and if you mm -hmm. have studied my books on uh, mastering love, sex, and intimacy, again, I always encourage men to appreciate a woman and help her to uh, reach that orgasmic uh, feeling and intensity. Women, with that, uh, again, they're noticing better libido, better orgasm, easier obtaining of that uh, wonderful like, feeling. Yes. Yeah, the mm -hmm. climax itself, right? <laughs> yes. it's, where, it's not necessarily what it's all about, but it's part of the whole uh, cycle of, of love. So, and uh, also for those men who are challenged and maybe Viagra failed, which it does fail in, in nearly 70% of the cases, mm -hmm. particularly in those individuals who have an existing issue with clogged arteries to the male organ and various other organs of the body. Um, it, it may very well be that the uh, PT-141 may very well work, but in some of the more challenging cases, uh, injecting uh, the uh, penis with what's called a trimix or a quad mix mm -hmm. with the right combinations, a good uh, pharmacist who's experienced in this area, that specializes in this area, we can kind of point you to uh, which doctors that we're working with are really good with this whole particular area. Uh, Alpristadil, papaverin, ventolamine, uh, atropin, uh, these work uh, and very, very well. I've even um, helped individuals with paralysis to utilize uh, this kind of intervention. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, I've had a few of the paralysis patients who couldn't make love to their wife, in one case I'm thinking of, for nearly five years, and he was able to perform and achieve uh, his erection. But with paralysis, you gotta be very careful because the body doesn't really sense some of the, um, the, 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 the potential risks uh, and literally uh, you can you could bend or break the penis per, per se if mm -hmm. you get too rough in situations I, I trust me I've been aware of these situations and so you know when you're intervening with these things know the patient know the situation know the limitations but bring on the joy it's all available mm -hmm. and, and sometimes just doing these injections say once or twice a week can bring on normal erectile function. And of course, this is a big favorite of the porn stars who, mm -hmm. you know, they make these movies and they're trying to glorify this whole thing about, you know, bigger, larger, and last longer. And we have a different discussion yes. when it comes to this, but <laughs> at least, you know, the, in the profession of what they're trying to portray, they're able to accomplish it. Now, here, here's an interesting full of statin. It's, it's actually a protein, not a peptide. It, it has the potential to inhibit what's called myostatin, and that helps to prevent the muscle breakdown. So um, there's examples in uh, the actual real world of, of animals where some of these genetic uh, changes where they're just born this way, it prevents muscle wasting when they have this uh, full of statin at higher levels. Very muscular uh, animals. Uh, I've seen examples in dogs and cattle. Yes. Uh, and now mm -hmm. humans, some of them, you know, we'll see what the upper limit is. Uh, again, you know, bigger, stronger, better. I'm not sure at how far they want to uh -huh. go, but certainly to offset muscle wasting and sarcopenia and the whole problem with aging, right? Exactly. And what about the importance of the brain repair with peptides? Yes, the cerebral um, lysin is a combination of these peptides. It's used for your brain repair in neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. Mm -hmm and strokes. So we're able to use these peptides to really help to decelerate all these age-related aging processes. And with complex conditions, as we've stated with Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or stroke, you don't want to depend on just one no. novel therapy. This mm -hmm. certainly could make a difference. But you know, we're looking at the cell uh, transplantation, uh, the use of similar cell types. 
uh, that engages stem cells and overall rejuvenative medicine. So the frontier is new and progressive, but I would again encourage people, make sure you have that good, healthy, whole foods diet, you're exercising, you're practicing the four steps, because here you could be doing you know, these in innovative uh, therapies, interventions, but if your core program isn't intact, yeah. you're at risk, you know, because what is still clogged arteries, the number one cause of death, strokes and heart attacks, uh, it, it's a result of some faulty habits uh, that people can consistently learn to fix. But mm -hmm. uh, again, once you're onto that new frontier and you're going, look, I I'm getting old, I want to kind of take myself to the next level. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about, quote, sports performance. Uh, although, I'm, again, I'm not judge me judging these things because some of these growth factors some of the athletes have used uh, as well. But, you know, I, I think that the release of and the formation of what we call growth hormone secretagogues uh, mm -hmm. just helps kind of with the right delivery system and there's studies of oral delivery and we now know that even insulin can be uh, absorbed orally and so um, they're trying to find consistent methods to uh, make sure the delivery is appropriate. So uh, don't be surprised when some of these novel uh, developments that we're using that are mm -hmm. available, uh, we're making a whole host of these peptides available to people now exactly. at um, one of our websites so that people can understand. Some of it's for scientific research, others mm -hmm. are for well well described and can benefit. Some might require a doctor's prescription, uh, but overall when they're taken orally, there, there isn't too many limitations to them. It's no. only when they're injected. And again, mm -hmm. if you're going to have this injected, don't do it yourself. Have a good doctor. Again, we can work with you and find out uh, ways to accomplish this. So uh, I know you and I are very excited after traveling around the <laughs> yes. world and meeting with some of these world scientists and going, wow, uh, this, this, this science is available now. Yes. That's why the big buzz, stuff. right? Yes, exactly. And I'm like, if there's an ability for you to decelerate your aging process, why not? Why give in, oh, I'm just aging, oh, I'm just old. I, I don't give in to that. We can actually decelerate our aging process. That's so amazing. And you look around the world, uh, the Russians have pioneered a lot of work with peptides, uh, mm -hmm. Australians I've met with, and it's interesting because they use this oftentimes as uh, for their athletes to kind of recover more rapidly to get mm -hmm. back out in the field. Uh, also, uh, there's emotional issues that have been benefit uh, Yes. CELAC mm -hmm. and CEMAX, uh, it's been uh, shown to be uh, bioavailable nasally, much like oxytocin. You can just yes. spray it right on the mm -hmm. nose. I usually like uh, the little troche, which again, um, we're gonna, uh, when you talk about oxytocin, I mean, you think about anxiety and a kind of a future mm -hmm. worry. Uh, but these um, have been helping people with depression, bipolar disorders, uh, certainly MIF1, ACTH, uh, dihexa. They all have different names and so forth. Uh, but again, um, some of them have really got out to the forefront because uh, the, the, the doctors and the athletes and, and individuals who are aging mm -hmm. are looking for what can I do to kind of de deal and reverse this whole aging process. And probably one of the big factors is what's called IGF-1. What is it known to do? Yes, it has like nerve regenerative factors and, and capabilities. That's just amazing. Mm -hmm. And GT GDF-2, uh, beneficial in tissue repair, uh, useful in anti-aging potential health uh, drawbacks. You always need to look at any kind of potential side effects or compounding effects and always start with very minimal dosages. Don't go high to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, really, you know, practice some safe, logical, sense, sensible approaches. And again, work with doctors who have worked with these things for a number of years. And that, that's where it's back. So in summary, these peptide questions, um, by listening to what we had to say, uh, some of these are already answered and some uh, beg to be answered at this moment. So in summary, what's the, the first thing? So the first question is that can you mix several peptides together in one larger bottle, then draw up multiple peptides in each syringe for injection over a week? Are you we able to mix your little cocktail like you mentioned? Absolutely. Uh, some people just simply will draw up the syringe if it's for themselves, obviously only, and they have like uh, three or four or five different vials and they'll pull up a, enough into the, into the insulin needle, it's, it's usually that size, and inject that, and that gives them kind of this multiple peptide without having to inject yourself three or four or five times. Uh -huh. So it can work quite well. Others are using kind of a, a weekly type protocol where they're drawing up a larger amount, and then mm -hmm. each day when they pull it up to, to inject, say, first thing in the morning, if you will, 
um, they're they're going to see you know just an ease of use just makes it simple yes. um, the oral peptides go without saying you just take them orally comes with directions and again you can get some of these peptides already on our website and just check it out so uh, we'll point you to those areas and what's and, the next area um, dr. Nick so can you overdose on these peptides it, you know, it, it is possible, as I mentioned. I mean, you think about the stimulation of human growth hormone, uh, the production of your own production. But because it is your own production, there are some limiting factors because there's what's called somatostatin. There's uh, what's called negative feedback loop. So as the levels start to get to a certain level, if they get up too high, the body kind of backs off and says, okay, wait a minute, we're going to modify this. And it brings it down to a, a sensible level. I, I think, you know, in those people prone to one is good, two is better. You gotta be careful with those situations. Mm -hmm. Follow what the directions say, try it out. Now I've heard athletes say, look, when it comes with the directions, I've used it, it doesn't work, it doesn't get me my results, what results you want? If you're wanting, you know, again, more lean body mass, more physicality, it might require a little bit higher dosages. Again, don't do it on your own. Uh, there's certainly forums out there that talk about these things, but how reliable are they? Are they doing backup tests? Are they making sure their sources of peptides are free of microbials mm -hmm. and uh, you know various uh, byproducts? Because you know you, you can be buying something and it may not be what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, like in the case of human growth hormone, there was a whole example of people uh, buying uh, that turned out to be HCG, which is a much less oh, expensive wow. hormone. Mm -hmm and has some different possible benefits, but mm -hmm. nowhere near what legitimate, you know, say peptides, human growth hormone, uh, the uh, various uh, st stable factors. So yes, you know, these pe peptides are stable, uh -huh. even when combined uh, at the same time. So the storage so how, issue, yeah. right? How long can we store it for? I mean, how long can you keep these peptides? You know, so long they're, they're in, in sterile conditions in their powder form before you mix, mix them. Okay. With, with the, once they're mixed with liquid, you need to use them in a reasonable period. But mm -hmm. uh, I've known of examples, you know, again, not placing suggestions about your personal use, but what I've seen and in the literature and studying with other scientists, these peptides have rather long storage time. If they are, uh, if anything, exposed to daylight, that can uh, make some of the peptides become a little mm -hmm. bit fragile. But so store in them in a cool, dark place. Uh, and uh, in, the, in many cases, these peptides remain stable for mm -hmm. years. So it might be that you know you're able to acquire the peptides working you know with one of our practitioners or educators and then when you're ready and you want to try out you know what protocols work then you get some guidance at that point so, mm -hmm. uh, so I mentioned it earlier but go ahead yeah, on so this last point c communication with your healthcare provider is key for them to customize your peptides and again I feel like these peptides is an adjunct to your healthy lifestyle right very, very important. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I tend to see, you know, uh, because these uh, interventions uh, with proper testing, make sure they're mm -hmm. microbial free, free of heavy metals, reliable sources, they're legitimate, um, you know, uh, uh, lab reports that we know. Yes. Uh, sometimes it costs a little bit more than the just general internet, I'm going to buy these peptides oh, type of, of thing. <laughs> but, you know, your health is important. So you really want to make informed, proper decisions. Uh, it, when I think about it too, uh, the effectiveness of these peptides has been so uh, exciting in, in terms of its opportunities. Uh, I think of the people and the doctors who they're really kind of focused in their one area of, say, detoxification. They're really yeah. good with it, mm -hmm. but then they don't quite get, look, uh, if I'm detoxing, I got a supplement. Exactly. And what about this? If I'm using fiber, I might need a little bit more supplementation. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm exercising, I'm perspiring, aren't I gonna need supplementation? Oh, of course. One of the keys mm -hmm. to really progressing to that next level, wouldn't you say, is this whole cascade of not just detoxification, but nutrification with yes. the right supplementation and exactly. the right selection of herbs. And of course, you gotta fortify it. You gotta give it the right hormones. You have to give it the right stem cells. You have to give it the right concoction so you, you can have a better lifestyle, better life, feel better, feel healthier. I respect those people who draw the line says, look, I'll do the other things because it seems really natural. But if you're looking at peptides, look, you can try the oral peptides. They are simply peptides. They are present in all of our environment. And again, many uh, approved, many new ones being reviewed and discussed. I think that uh, the important thing about it, though, mm -hmm. is you could do the other steps. And if you're not doing, I think one of the keys of what we call fortification, 
to help at the chromosomal level, the mitochondrial level, the gut health, to help the stem cell release and repair uh, because we're all aging and as we age, we have to rebuild. If you're building, breaking down faster than you're building up, it's a problem. So I know Dr. Kathleen Geringer has seen the live blood analysis, dry blood analysis. We're making this openly available on our online courses to doctors to learn how we do it, how we've perfected and continue to use this approach for over 40 years because there's something secure about looking at your cellular health, oh, where yeah. you're at, you know, mm -hmm. if you're absorbing vitamins, minerals, peptides, and how your immune system is functioning because we pointed out many peptides that play a big role in the immune system. Oh yeah, immune system is key. It protects us from everything. And just think about uh, in this world of toxicity and chemicals, the risk of um, overload of these toxins, you've got to follow these four steps. So once again, everyone, uh, I, I'm glad that you stay tuned. Make sure you apply these four steps. And if you're unclear, follow up and do some of the uh, hormone questionnaires. Uh, get some of the readings done. Look at our uh, peptide slides and that we've uploaded mm -hmm. at some of these very, very special sites. And we now have uh, some very elite coaches that are work, ready to work with people. We tend to work in groups with people like this. So if you want to share this material and you have questions, please be active because as it reaches more and more people, we can really transform lives uh, in, in a yes. big way together. So mm -hmm. this is uh, Dr. Nick Delgado and Dr. Kathleen Garinger. Believe it or not, we're on Pacific Coast time. Uh, we're going to have to catch up with sleep because we just got back from um, a, a 10 or 11 day trip in, in Asia. Uh, but it's approaching past 12 minutes. I don't yes. know how the time went so fast. <laughs> but we just knocked out a series of courses. Uh, we hope you love them. Please give us feedback. We can only produce quality information when we know what you're most interested in. And uh, once again, be well, be strong, and stay tuned to our next segment. Thank you.